Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Raw and Wild Hearts podcast. I'm your host and guide, Lori Rising. And welcome to today's spontaneous podcast episode called Pluto and You. Uh, it's not no, not so much spontaneous as embodied. Uh, I've been sitting with this for a while now as I release my YouTube videos around the new and full moons and the astrology transits that are coming up and the energies that I'm beginning to feel intuitively through my channel, I feel like it's a little preemptive. I keep feeling like ah, I, I, I want to release the embodied energies that are washing through the collective as the actual transits happen, which is why I'm here with you today. Today, Pluto is moving from Capricorn to Aquarius. Is it a big deal? Yeah, it's a big deal. But that's why I'm jumping on. I'm actually dropping into Pluto energy and looking at what can die off in where I've been going in my offerings and my business and my life and my alignment so that I can rebirth it in ways that feel hella aligned for me. And it feels very aligned for me to come on the day of transits to share exactly what I'm sensing in the field. So how does that feel to you? That's also going to activate more of the Pluto transformation where I do get to a weekly podcast episode for you. I've been teasing it for a while. I've been teasing myself with it for a while, but again, I just wait for it to unfold in the physical and it hasn't, but this feels right. And it feels most in alignment for me that I share in both ways, because astrology has always kind of been used as a predictive tool, right? We've been looking at the transits that are coming up and the transits that we've been through and our own natal charts and how they aspect the current transits and then how that might look for our future based on how we've moved through them in the past. But y'all, the deepest place of acceleration that we're going is in the absolute present moment right now. So I feel like astrology is going to be moving through dramatic shifts as Pluto transits through Aquarius for the next 20 years as well, because we're just experiencing this kind of ascension in lifetimes. I mean, so I feel like it's just so extra important for us all to be in our fluidity and adaptability and just go through the unfolding and revealing process. And honestly, this week, let yourself tap in to the wild fluctuations that we're moving through. We had the spring equinox on the 20th. We have a boatload of powerhouse Aries energies moving us forward, especially that new moon at zero degrees, 48 minutes. That's really all about the unencumbered, unfiltered potential and possibility. And now today moving through Pluto's transit from Capricorn to Aquarius, that have a lot to drop into on that. But then in two more days, we've got Mars making a big move into cancer after seven months in Gemini, which is so unusual. It does not happen very often. It's because we had a very long, very excavating Mars retrograde in Gemini y'all. Oh, it sat on my moon for a very, very long time at the end. So I was feeling it. And so we're going to feel that shift of Mars because it's, it's moving in a different um, space than it has been for seven months, because we've gotten really kind of honed in to this Gemini energy and this new development in our soul's language. Right. Um, so we're going to take action in our ancestry and connecting to our guides. We're going to take action in our home environment and how do we elevate the frequency kind of in every aspect of our life? That's where I feel like this week is going. So don't worry if you're not doing too much, like in your business, in your mission, even in your life, let yourself feel these energies because I feel like the growth spurt is going to be right on the other side of them. We're going to get a lot of ahas, a lot of epiphanies and enlightenments that are going to help us move in big dramatic ways 
up until the Mercury retrograde at the end of April. I mean, we're still going to go through that, but that's going to be the first planetary slowdown that we've had in a long time. So let yourself ease into the momentum that's revving up at this time and let yourself feel like really understand on a cellular level, what's tapping on your soul, because that's the guidance of the energies that are coming through. So, um, first of all, before I move into a pl Pluto moving back and forth here and what that signifies for us, I wanted to share a review that came in and I want to thank you all. If you're new to the podcast, I'm so excited that you have found us definitely hit the subscribe button. And if you're on YouTube, hit the notification bell. I'd love to hear your comments and your resonance with the intuitive embodied messages that I'm sharing today. And I'd also love your review on Apple podcasts. I asked y'all to share some with me and you delivered and it feels so good. And really this feeling good and knowing the shifts that are happening because of the transmissions that I'm emitting from my being to yours out in the airwaves and the light waves and the frequency and the energy that keeps me elevated. And it's, that's the feeling that I want. So I'm going to be gravitating more towards those platforms where I feel good and I feel supported and empowered and platforms like Instagram. I feel like there's, a big transformation happening there. And I have been going through my own personal, um, almost re resistance. I don't know. I I've just been feeling off every time I open the app and it doesn't feel good to me. And that just signals like stop opening it. Right. And so that's where I've been in this even discomfort, right? Because as an entrepreneur, you get so programmed to, keep posting on social media and that's how you're, you know, going to build and develop. Well, Pluto and Aquarius here has shown us there's already a reel going around about calling Instagram out on how they have abandoned the patrons of the app that has helped them rise so deeply in this world. And they're use, utilizing their power and they're not being empowering. They're utilizing a power over and they have changed the algorithm. They have stopped showing the creations that they promised to show from their creators to mass people in very quick ways. They're being called out now. Pluto and Aquarius is bringing the energy of calling that out. So pay attention because I feel myself already. It's like the, I am having the preemptive, um, energy of like, Ooh, we are going to be leaving this very soon. It continues to not feel good. And other people are not feeling good as well. Like this is how we bring our belief and our energy together and we transfer it and we transmute it into something that is empowering. And so I just wanted to share one of these elevated, beautiful reviews with you right now. And this is from Art Wings and Wishes. Love that name, P.S. And it says, wow, Lori is so tapped in. I listened to her last two podcasts twice and even took notes because I felt that the information she channeled in was super relevant and important for our collective evolution and for ourselves. Inspired, authentic, and connected. Uh, thank you so, so very much, y'all. This is where I feel like we're going as well in Pluto and Aquarius is really lifting each other up and completely dismantling that narrative of competition. And when we realize that there is abundance for all, that we all are here to share our innate medicine in beautiful ways and no two people will share it in the same way. And you in deeper spaces of alignment will continue to magnetize those that are called to your frequency, those that vibrate there in your light, they will come, right? We've, it's, it's really, you know, I just had this interview today with Tracy Combera, and it's going to be amazing because we talked so much about dropping into the space of trust and following your feeling because y'all, I, I feel into the new earth businesses of just full unencumbered 
glory and praise and lifting each other up and loving each other so deeply and fully dramatically getting away from this one upping each other or this one size force all or this competition culture or scarcity selling. And it just feels so gorgeous, you know, and we really need to work on more of our giving and receiving as well, because the more that we feel the power in giving and receiving without an agenda around either, the more it's just going to like, <sighs> we're going to keep sharing the systems that elevate the people, the power of the people and how we come together in a place of strength. Right. So yeah, Pluto is a lot about decentralizing power, but it's more about lifting up the empowered places. That's how I see it. And that's how I see where we're going. So Pluto and Aquarius and Capricorn, which is I, the vision is sifting flower for me, refining the flower as we tip back and forth over the next year. Plus it's about destroying those systems that have been in place that keep imbalancing all like not just our earth, not just the collective and humanity, but consciousness. They keep sending out those waves and pulses of imbalance and us moving into what feels good in that higher wisdom of Aquarius. And how do we bring that together to create from that center? And let's just let ourselves tip back and forth. So like I said with you, one of my drop-ins to this energy that's happening right now, because we're at zero degrees today in Aquarius, is what feels right going forward in my business instead of what I've always had as a must or a need or um, how to do things in a certain way, right? Because that's that linear education and learning. And that, again, has caused so much effort. And when we continue to drop into the galactic activations, which is Aquarius, Aquarius is the sign of astrology and the galaxy and our galactic selves, we're going to trust all of the guidance and we're going to apply it. And that also has to do with Saturn and Pisces. Saturn is the foundation of your spiritual knowingness, of the abyss, of the limitlessness, of being boundless in what you know and how you are in the world. But Saturn's going to create more of a form and structure. Saturn rules Capricorn, and Capricorn again is all about the systems and structures that we build around us. And the ones that have been built have been running on our belief and our energy and our power for a really long time. So when you really feel into it, the dismantling of this over the last few years is happening very quickly and it's very exciting. We're still in the, if you wanted to, you know, really drop in, we're in the discomfort for a lot of people because we're still in the transformation and we're still feeling so much of that collective pain and hurt and holding on to what they're being told or sold. And I just love that Pluto is going to be like, I get it as like this kind of punch and it's like, nope, we're going to keep punching through that wall and we're going to keep letting you feel the difference in when your nervous system is saying a yes, when your body consciousness is giving you a yes, when you are functioning from a place of love frequency and balance. And when you have your inner resources rather than looking for anything in the external resources. So I hope that that helps as this is live. It's not live, but I'm actually putting it on video and here's the bees. <laughs> she has decided it's time. Um, yeah, but I hope that that helps as you, as you tap into what is my role in Pluto? And honestly, the transformation that we're going through, I feel like the role is 
above all, absolutely trusting your innate guidance system, trusting your intuitive hits, trusting your gut, trusting the feeling. Does it feel expansive? Does it feel fluid? Does it feel adaptable? Do you feel like you're in flow or does it feel not good? Does it feel, uh, limiting? Does it feel restrictive? Does it feel like you have to do it or do you desire to do it? Do you want to do it? And this can go in increments, you know, the more that you just slowly bring this in every day, the more we emanate it out into the collective and the more it's going to make a very deep change in Pluto. So, you know, if you live what we hope is a full physical life here in this body, maybe 80, 90, a hundred years old, oftentimes you're going to move through six different signs of Pluto, but you'll never make it through the full Zodiac wheel. And this is why I entitled the episode Pluto and you, I find it to be really interesting. If you look at how did you come to affect the collective and the generations before behind you? Like this is a generational pattern in Pluto energy. And how did you come to work with it? So the first six signs are Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. And those first signs of the Zodiac wheel are really all about the self. And who are you becoming and being like the development of you in the physical world. And then as we move into the next six signs, which are Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces, that's more about how do you now start moving out into the collective, into relations, into humanity, and then beyond humanity into the great expanse and higher consciousness, the spiritual world and connection. And so go ahead and look at your natal chart and look at where did you come in? Where was Pluto when you came in and what parts of the wheel are you actually working with? So for myself, my Pluto is in Libra along with the generation around me because Pluto stays in a sign for 14 to 20 years. And we started working in our relationships, our familial relationships. Like we wanted a new paradigm and we wanted it to feel good. We didn't want to sacrifice in those relationships anymore. And even in our, you know, that's obviously with my generation, that's going to be where you're going to see a lot more divorce. So even in our romantic relationships and how do we change how, well, how that feels right. Where we were staying in marriages or partnerships and sacrificing ourselves because of the rules that were created around us. And my generation is coming in and saying, wait a second, no, <laughs> that does not work. It's actually creating disconnection and dis-ease and unwellness and unhappiness, a lack of joy in this life. And we're realizing in this Pluto and Libra generation, like we actually came to experience joy on a deep level. And so I just wanted to give you that example. So if you start to look at the different um, archetypes and energies of every sign, you realize how you came to be a very deep part of the evolution of humanity based on the Pluto transformation that you are activating throughout your life here and with the collective and emanating up. So I don't know. I feel like it's really interesting. And I've been tapping into that a lot recently. Like, what did we come in to do through our Chiron? What did we come in to do through Uranus? What did we come in to do through Neptune, especially these planets that we won't see or experience the full Zodiac wheel with, because that just reminds us deeper of what our calling is. What's our soul's mission. It's like our cosmic imprint is the code that cracks what our purpose is. And the more that we drop in and look at how we work with the energies that we chose in this timeline, the more we accelerate from that opening. Because when we understand 
what we chose before we dropped into the human condition and the body, we get to live in that natural high. Like we were meant to come here and experience a natural high, but we've been severed and disconnected from the alignment in that. And I feel like Pluto is a major piece in that. So the last thing I'm going to tell you, if you know how to do this, how to look at your natal chart, go ahead and see where Pluto is transiting through your chart. What houses, house or houses is Pluto going to be moving through first of all, and that's going to really show you in your personal life, what are you moving through the death and rebirth of? Because we already know what we're moving through in the collective. But then when you um, look at the aspects it makes to your personal chart, you get to see more of that, those deeper layers that come in with astrology. And then if you know even more advanced astrology, you can look at what aspects are the planets making while Pluto moves through that house or those houses. And how is it going to be interacting with a lot of your planets through the trans? through the transit. Now the transit is really slow, so it's not going to move fast. You're not going to have, uh, in one year, you're not going to have a bunch of different aspects. You might only have one that actually comes to fruition, but that's where the house system, I feel like not the house system, sorry, just the house of where it's transiting is so important because that's going to show you the environment that wants to change in your life. Okay. So I hope that this episode has been super helpful. And if you're looking for deeper support and guidance in these aspects and what it means for you and your cosmic imprint and natal chart, come do a personal reading with me, y'all. They are multifaceted. They're multidimensional. We go through so many different layers of energies and potentials. And one of those is your astrology chart. And we bring in a lot of that cosmic signature and how that is showing you the map to where your soul feels most aligned. So check that out in the show notes below. And I will tell you that Pluto in Aquarius is actually a big catalyst to my new upcoming live soul business streamlined online digital course. This has been in the making for some time now, I think over a year maybe. And this is where I sit with the energy until it really presents. And it gives me the motivation and the alignment of like, yes, now is the time to do this. And I'm not offering this course because I'm a business coach. I am a soul guide and ascension uh, support. I'm offering this course because I've been through it. And I honestly want to help you have a multidimensional acceleration in your innate medicine, in your business, in what you offer to the world and how that grows. And I want you to do it in quantum ways. So I don't want you to waste the amount of time that I wasted on learning a lot of these systems to put in place for uh, the connections in your business. I want you to go right to the heart of it and not mess around with what Pluto is going to take down anyway. So if you would like to get in on that, join the wait list. I'm going to be sending out an email with an early, early bird discount. So for those people on the wait list, they're going to get a discount off of the early bird discount. And it's going to happen very soon. So check that out in the show notes below. If you would like to drop into when the astrology is great for launching, what might be opening for you, beautiful places of affirmations and embodied connection in your business and alignment and learning the 3D reality systems and structures of how to do things easily and without much effort. Okay. There's so much more to it. Um, I hope to see you there and let me know if you have any questions. I'm always here for support. And I just so appreciate you being here for tuning in and listening and sharing these podcasts and messages when they really align with you, when they really resonate and support you. I know your community will love it as well. And that's how we get this new earth rebirth and revolution in our evolution 
into the airwaves and emanating out as a dominant narrative in this collective so that we all get to tap in to that love frequency and create in really beautiful dynamic ways. So until next time, y'all, don't forget to keep looking up.